Hi, this is Dr. Krupka. Today we're going to be talking about adrenal physiology. Uh, this is part one in our three-part series on adrenal glands. We're going to do adrenal physiology, adrenal dysfunction, and then some tips to keep your adrenal glands healthy. First of all, the adrenal glands are named for where they sit. Adrenal means above the kidneys. You have one on each side above your kidneys, about the size of a walnut roughly. Uh, they are part of the endocrine system, which is another name for your hormone system. The adrenal glands provide a mechanism for stress reactions and hormonal control, and we'll go into more detail on that in a minute. They are controlled by what's, call, what's called the HPA axis, and that stands for the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Hypothalamic is referring to the hypothalamus gland, which is in your brain and, and kind of oversees most of the endocrine system. Uh, the adrenal glands have two distinct parts. There is an adrenal cortex, which is the outer shell of the adrenal glands, and then there's the adrenal medulla, which is the center part of the adrenal glands, and they have fairly distinctly different responsibilities. Uh, in this graphic, you're going to see, and I'm going to move my cursor here a little bit so I can point it out to you. This is the adrenal medulla in here. You can see it's labeled here. And then most of this is considered the adrenal cortex. And what I want to point out as we look through these, I'm going to read down through these. This first one describes the adrenal medulla. And the adrenal medulla creates epinephrine and norepinephrine. The older names for those are adrenaline and noradrenaline. And they help you get ready for your fight or flight response, or they initiate the fight or flight response for you. Um, now, from the cortex, it produces DHEA or dihydroepiandosterone, uh, pregnenolone, progesterone, estrogens, testosterones, androstenedione, um, all of those are um, gender hormones or precursors to your gender hormones. Um, and they can do some balancing of, of other hormones in the system. And some, especially DHEA, estrogen, and testosterone, have some anti-aging functions as well. Uh, next, you'll see the hormone cortisol, uh, and that regulates blood sugar. It's anti-inflammatory. It can um, modify your immune functions, generally toning them down. Uh, it can change the tone of the, of the blood vessels. Uh, the central nervous system can be stimulated by cortisol, uh, and it, it's created in reactions to stress. Uh, and then the last one you'll see here is aldosterone. Uh, that regulates your electrolytes. Uh, when you start having um, aberrant uh, aldosterone production, you can run into some muscle cramping issues, heart palpitations, uh, those types of things. But that's, that's aldosterone. Now those last few that I went through, those all come uh, from the adrenal cortex, not the medulla. So you can see very distinctly different functions there as you look at that. This is a graphical representation of the HPA axis. You have the hypothalamus up top. That communicates to the pituitary by means of something called uh, cortisol releasing hormone. Uh, that tells the pituitary to secrete its messenger, which is adrenocorticotropic hormone. That tells the adrenals to make cortisol and several other of the adrenal hormones that we just talked about. And so that's kind of the control mechanism there. There are some feedbacks that go up and tell the pituitary and the hypothalamus when uh, you've had enough and they don't need to send those messages anymore. Cortisol rhythm is one of the things we assess when we look at adrenal glands. Um, and at the bottom here, you'll see a, a cortisol rhythm test. This is from one of the saliva tests uh, that we do. Uh, and you'll see there is a red line at the top, a blue line at the bottom. Those mark the upper and lower limits of where your cortisol level should be throughout the day. And the solid black line down the middle is the patient's value. Now, this happens to be uh, an essentially normal result. And that's why I chose it for this. But there is a, an 8 in the morning, noon, 4 p.m., and midnight sample um, on here. And those are the four points on the graph that you see. Uh, your cortisol should be highest first thing in the morning. It should decline slowly throughout the day. I describe this kind of as landing an airplane. You have an initial descent that's fairly rapid, and then it levels off and descends more and more slowly throughout the day until it touches down gently in the evening. Now, it provides energy and arousal in the morning, prepares you for falling asleep in the evening, and it can be influenced by stress, stimulants, exercise. Any number of things can, can start to, uh, to change the pattern here. Now, what does cortisol do? We're going to go through several hormones now and talk about their effects. 
Cortisol regulates blood sugar. It is anti-inflammatory. It modulates your immune system, generally toning it down, like we said. Uh, it can influence your sleeping and waking cycles, as we talked about on the previous slide. It stimulates the central nervous system. It increases vascular tone, and by that mechanism can also have some effect on your blood pressure. Uh, it suppresses the anterior pituitary, which makes luteinizing hormone, which has some control over ovulation and periods, and thyroid stimulating hormone. Both of those can be suppressed when your cortisol levels are too high. It can damage the hippocampus, which is another part of the brain that controls some higher functions. Um, it slows conversion from T4 to T3. Now T4 is the inactive transport form of thyroid hormone. When it gets out to the tissues, it gets converted to T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone. So it can slow the conversion from inactive to active thyroid hormone. That can make you feel like you are hypothyroid or have a low thyroid, so to speak, even when the thyroid is producing plenty of T4. You can have suppression of what's called SIGA. IGA is an antibody. The SIGA is the antibody that's secreted into the digestive tract to protect you against things in your digestive tract. So it can, that's partly how it blunts the immune system. Um, and it can promote insulin resistance, and insulin resistance is what leads to type 2 diabetes. Effects of aldosterone. It balances your sodium and potassium levels. It can control your fluid balance, also having an effect on your blood pressure. Uh, general electrolyte control and uh, and you can see here it also mentions blood pressure directly and with that electrolyte control this can lead to some muscle cramping usually calves and feet come first but you can get little eye twitches and things like that um, even sometimes heart palpitations uh, from aberrant or aberrant levels of aldosterone effects of DHEA this is a precursor to your androgens androstenedione testosterone and estrogen it's involved in growth and development. Some people think of it as the youth hormone. Um, it can influence your immune, immune response, generally upregulating it, making your immune system a little bit more active. Uh, it influences, influences cardiovascular function uh, and influences bone mineral density. It can actually help you maintain uh, better bone, uh, bone mineral density. Now, shifting gears between your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic mode to your nervous system is your fight or flight response. Uh, it'll have increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, um, and decreased digestion. When you're running for your life, you don't necessarily need to be digesting foods, you're not making hormones, you're not healing tissues. There are a lot of things that slow down um, when you're shunting all of that energy toward the fight or flight response. Now, the parasympathetic mode for your nervous system, uh, I kind of call it the after Thanksgiving dinner mode. You have increased digestion, increased healing, increased tissue repair, increased sleep, um, better libido, better hormone production, all of those things that are not important to the fight for your life stress response are going to happen during the parasympathetic mode of your nervous system. Now, when the adrenal function is altered, you can have digestive issues, allergies, chronic fatigue symptoms, hypothyroidism, uh, immune system weakness, diabetes, and any host of, of other degenerative diseases. You can see already that the adrenals kind of are at the center of a, of a web, so to speak, um, with, their, with their influence on many other factors uh, in your body. So, those are the basics of adrenal physiology. I encourage you to watch the other two adrenal videos on adrenal dysfunction and, and what to do to keep them healthy. If you need to, you can contact our office with the information you see on the screen. As always, drkrupka.com is a great option or you can just call the office. So thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next video.